right, hello, wine-drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday, and this is valuable scientific research that we're doing here at the Wine Watch, an annual event, Del Forno, Quintarelli, Quintarelli, Del Forno. You know, every year we do an event, and we will feature the wines of Del Forno one year. We'll feature the wines of Quintarelli next year. And on the third year, we will feature Quintarelli versus Del Forno to show you the two greatest producers of Valpolicella, Amarone da Valpolicella, uh, in the Verona. And uh, they're very different, polar opposites. Quintarelli, really old school, and uh, he's been exporting wine to the United States for 100 years and cask for most of those 100 years. And, uh, well, he represents the old guard, actually just passed away, I think, last year. And, um, well, don't worry about it. Everything's going to stay the same. The gentleman that's making the wine has been working with Quintarelli for the past couple decades. So nothing is going to change here, rest assured. They just make a few thousand cases of wine total at both of these properties. So very small production when you're talking about the Amarone, 1,000, 1,500 cases. The Reserva Amarone, three 500 cases. The Ricciotto, a few hundred cases. The Caso, uh, Seco Cato Merlo, which is the white, which is what we started with. One of the most unique wines that Quintarelli makes. And, uh, well, Quintarelli thought of as being sweeter in style than Del Forno. He dries his grapes longer. He also leaves them in oak longer. He doesn't use new oak. Traditionalists use old, large oak. So um, some wines he keeps in oak for up to 10 years. Del Forno Romano, the new kid on the block, 1985, the first vintage. And his wine styles are, his style of making wine is very different. He doesn't dry the grapes as long. Um, he does pick the grapes later, so you still get the same amount of alcohol in his wine. And also he uses new barrique to age the wine, not large old oak. Uh, new French barrique. So you get that oak spice in his wines. And, uh, you know, they're both at the highest level of quality. But, you know, some people that love Del Forno don't like Quintarelli and vice versa because of that reason that the styles are very different. I love both of these wines. And it's fascinating to taste them against each other. On this evening, we started out with the white. And Quintarelli makes a white. Del Forno does not, to my knowledge. This wine is a unique blend. Uh, you know, back in the day when they planted vineyards, they didn't plant just one grape. They planted a bunch of different grapes. And they did kind of a field blend. So, like, in between, you know, different rows. And it wasn't necessarily, you know, done in any style or fashion. It was just, you know, planted them. And this wine's a blend of a Garganica, Trebbiano, Toscano, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, and a clone of the Toast. Kai grape, and uh, it's got a lovely bright lemon blossom uh, note to the nose, honey, uh, really pretty bouquet here, some uh, um, tree fruit, apples, and pears, and uh, really fresh on the palate. You notice uh, no influence of oak here, none of that spice, but you do get some minerality on the finish to this wine, and a lovely uh, savoriness, which is uh, what I like about old world wines. They just beg to be, uh, you know, drink the whole bottle, not just one glass. Anyways, delicious. A great start to the evening. This wine's around $35, $45, the 2011 vintage. The first of the Amarones. We gave it to Quintarelli since we had the oldest wine here, the 1983. We had the 83 Al Zero, which was the very first vintage of the Al Zero last year. And uh, that wine's still fabulous. This wine also still showing really nice, a lighter color. All the Quintarelli wines were lighter in color. The more time they spend in oak, the more the color they lose. And uh, this wine's got lovely cherry fruits and pretty uh, dry tobacco spice notes in there. and Some underbrush qualities, some exotic brown spices and notes of uh, the clay kind of minerality you get from uh, Amarone. To me, it reminds me of Play-Doh a little bit. Uh, the salinity and uh, really nice amount of sweet fruit on the tongue. And this wine, just silky smooth. The tannins in this wine, just like velvet on your tongue. Uh, lovely, bittersweet, tangy cherry fruit lasting all the way to the end. Still quite fresh and balanced. This wine is uh, 15% alcohol, not quite as, bit, as heavy as the uh, Del Forno, but still his, his new wines can be up towards of 17% as well. Most excellent juice. This wine still hanging in there. Starting to show a little bit of uh, signs of age at the end of the night, but fantastic. Most excellent juice. The 1991 Del Forno. Uh, this is not considered a great vintage. 90 would be looked at as a better vintage, but the 91 has outperformed the 90 before at tastings. We've had both of them. And uh, this one was the wine of the night on several scorecards. Score dark cherry, liqueur-like fruit. The color on this still very opaque, very intense. Dark spices, espresso, licorice, a bouquet of fresh flowers, black pepper, really complex bouquet of aromas, and a solid core of fruit left in this wine. Really rich and well endowed on the palate as well. Just sweet and syrupy, a uh, little balsamic -y notes to that dark cocoa, peppery spice showing up on the finish as well. Even though this wine is really big, 
still a lovely balance, lovely freshness at the end. You still wanted to drink another glass of all these wines. This wine is killer and uh, still probably lasts another 10 or 20 years in your cellar. The 1997, this wine has got incredible color, just a cornucopia of black spices, tobacco, soy, exotic, sweet, bitter cocoa, balsamic, and, and just an array of floral notes as well, brown sugar, really intense and sweet and sappy on the palate. This wine is all that and a box of chocolates. Needs another 10 years, though, still relatively young, has some tannins, got a cherry pie cream filling, uh, dark cocoa, exotic spice, and a little bit of earth, dark earth showing on the finish with this wine. Killer juice, the 97 Del Forno. The 97 Quintarelli Killer as well. You know, a different style. The Quintarelli wine's a bit more elegant. Like I said, lighter in color. And um, even though they're lighter in color, still have all the nuance and flavor and the length on the finish. This wine, smooth and silky on the palate. It's a cornucopia of like brown spice, dried meats, kind of plum, dried pruny kind of quality to the fruits. And uh, green tea, a little cocoa in there as well dried flowers. It's an incredible complex array of aromas and on the palate, all that nuance showing through the finish and uh, still lovely freshness in this wine. Like I said, lighter in style, more elegant than the Del Forno, but not lighter in taste. The wine still showing superbly killer juice. I couldn't pick a favorite between the 97 Del Forno and Quintarelli. Maybe I would edge it out to the Del Forno just because it may last a little longer in the, bo in the bottle. 2003 Quintarelli Amarone. 2003 maybe not considered the best vintage, but Quintarelli made Reserva. And it, in the off vintage, he doesn't make Amarone. He makes a wine called Rosso del Pepe, which uh, this wine had, this 2003 had aroma, had this really lovely exotic kind of green tea, sun-dried cherry, plum fruit, dried flowers, dark cocoa, cigar box spice, milk chocolate, really lovely, smooth and polished texture on the palate with layers of that spice and wonderful freshness in this wine. This wine definitely a little higher in alcohol here at 16% but still not as high as the Del Forno. 17.5%, the 2006, a blockbuster. This wine, just dark and opaque in color, dark cherry liqueur-like fruit on the nose, sweet tobacco spice, dark chocolate, some of that Play-Doh and clay minerality that you're getting more in the Quintarellis, and um, some graphite and toasty oaky nose that you get from the new oak in this wine is showing up because the wine is so young. Really rich and opening up nicely as this wine sits in the glass. Uh, thick and chewy on the palate, just lovely viscosity in this wine, some lovely tan, some ripe round tannins here, but still velvety smooth on the tongue. This wine's got great freshness on the finish, even though 17% of alcohol, like a fortified wine, it's showing a little heat, but still, this wine has got the acidity to keep it in balance, and this wine will last 10, 20 years easily. The two. 97 Ricciottos were both out of this world, I have to say. You know, I gave the edge to the Del Forno and the Ricciotto uh, battle here again, and I really don't have any uh, reason to do that because I have a ton of Quintarelli 97. I bought everything they would give me. I got half bottles, maybe one left. I have 750s, and I have Magnums. I'm probably the only person on earth to own Magnums of Ricciotto. This is an ancient style of wine. Where they, um, um, it's a dessert style wine. You know, wines 100 years ago were very sweet. And this wine's got more sweetness, more residual sugar than Sauternes. And just a dark, opaque, uh, purple color to the uh, Del Forno. Incredible how dark the color is in this wine. Quintarelli, again, a little lighter, but Recciotto still a really dark color. Some lovely brown spices showing up in the Quintarelli. Lovely, silky, velvety texture. Cherry liqueur fruits and wonderful freshness in, th in this wine. I just thought the Del Forno had just more concentration, more richness. Both of these Recciottos, though, killer. And that's what we had to drink at our Recciotto, our Amarone battle between Quintarelli and Dal Forno. And I have to say, honey, the uh, risotto was fabulous also. The black risotto, a perfect accompaniment with the little Reggiano Parmigiana. And uh, this one we made with Tommaso Bussola's Valpolicella Ripassa, which added a nice little bitter character to the finish on that, which went beautifully with the Amaronas. And then the short rib with chocolate mole sauce, an absolute home run with the wines as well. That's what we had to eat at our, rich, at our Del Forno Quintarelli Tasting. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember... Always drink the good stuff first.